Hi everyone, welcome to the final three videos on cells. This one is going to be on organelles and cell function. And we're going to cover every organelle in both plant and animal cells, except for the cell membrane, because we cover that in part two. We're going to take a quick look at the same two sunshine state standards that we talked about in part two. That is to relate the structure and the function for the components in plant and animal cells. Now we've already explained the cell membrane in the last video, so we won't do that again. And the idea of passive and active transport in 14.3, we're going to be comparing and contrasting the general structures of plant and animal cells and also prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells was done in video number two. Uh, we're just going to jump right into it and basically the way we're going to run this video is I'm just going to talk to you about these separate structures found inside of the cell and what they do. Um, right now, every, every structure that I'm telling you uh, is found in all eukaryotic cells. Some of these are also found in prokaryotic cells, but that's in video two. Every eukaryotic cell has some kind of combination of these structures. Okay, we're going to start out with the, the most basic one. It doesn't have anything fun or anything. It's just glop. It's just kind of like runny jello. It is the cytoplasm. It's more than water. It's a little bit thicker than water, but it is mostly water. And it is also, it, it made, because it's made out of water, lots of things can be dissolved into it, such as nutrients uh, and other chemicals for the cell function. And also, um, oxygen can be dissolved in it, carbon dioxide can be dissolved in it, waste. And it helps to move these things in and out of the cell because of the idea of it's made out of cytoplasm. Interestingly enough, a lot of these organelles that we talk about uh, that I'm going to be showing you also are filled with the same cytoplasm. It's pretty much everywhere um, and, and, it, and it's used for the same thing everywhere. Stuff floats in it so it's some support uh, and it also can dissolve things and this is one of the main reasons we have to drink so much water is to maintain the structure of this cytoplasm because every cell in your body has it. Um, and in this particular picture, it would be all this white area right here. That's where the, the line is pointing. It's not pointing to any particular structure. Okay. Um, moving along, the nucleus is probably, well, they're all important. So I hate to keep saying one is more important than the other, but the nucleus is very important because it houses all of the DNA. And uh, it contains all the information for running the cell. Now, remember that in a prokaryote, there is no nucleus. The DNA is just floating around inside of the cytoplasm. But in this case, uh, it was, you know, as cells evolved, um, they evolved kind of a, another layer, a more protective layer around the DNA. Because if the DNA breaks or is damaged, that's it, game over, everybody dies. And so, one, it, you know, it was smart to wrap around your DNA another layer of protection to keep it from getting damaged and uh, also it kind of houses it in a, in a central location that it's easier to get to um, and all the DNA is there and so if the cell had a brain this would be it now I'm, I'm gonna try to avoid making analogies um, about these cell structures you can you can think of them as a, a living thing like a I don't know like a turtle or something you can think of them as like a city or a house uh, or you know like a, like a school and if you'd like to, that's a really good way to memorize these things, but I on purpose am not sharing those with you because I'd like for you to look it up on your own maybe. Look for analogy for cells uh, in, as a Google search and it may help you to memorize them, but I want you to pick your own because there's all kinds out there and they are helpful. I would encourage you to do it, but I'm not going to try, specifically not going to try to give you an analogy, but I, I, you know, I will say that this does kind of act like the brain. Um, inside of the nucleus, there's another structure there called a the nucleolus, and the nucleolus has a job, and it makes ribosomes, which we're going to talk about later, but there's these little red dots that are everywhere. Ribosomes are protein makers, uh, and we'll talk about ribosomes in a minute, but they're made inside of this part of the nucleus called the nucleolus. And um, more inside of the nucleus are these structures called chromosomes. They're just DNA, but the DNA... Um, can at various times be found as two types of structures. One's called chromatin, which is DNA that's basically unpacked, and one is called chromosomes, which is basically DNA that's packed up. And I want you to just remember that for now because we're going to talk a whole lot more about that structure soon. Um, but the chromosomes are found inside of the nucleus. In addition to that, there is a layer around the nucleus, just like the cell membrane there's a nuclear membrane. In fact, anytime you see a membrane in here, inside of these structures here or these structures here, they're all made the same way. They're all made of those phospholipids. And uh, this is just another membrane, and it happens to be the membrane around the nucleus. And it has holes in it 
called nuclear pores that allow things to go into and out of the nucleus uh, without having to so we never take the DNA out of the nucleus if you need the DNA you got to go into the nucleus do what you're gonna do with the DNA and come back out and you'll we'll talk more about that when we get to um, <clears throat> protein synthesis the an, another structure called vacuoles they are these uh, large spaces in this particular cell they're drawn small this is more than likely an animal cell animal cells have vacuoles but they're very small and they're used to store things they're like a storehouse uh, and you can you know with animal cells they don't use vacuoles all that much although they are there but you can just think of them as like a place to put chemicals that the cell needs just for storage now if you're a plant cell the the size of these things can be huge uh, plant cells tend to store lots of materials and so as much as 80 percent of the interior volume of a plant cell can be a vacuole so vacuoles just keep in mind vacuoles are like a place to store things okay ribosomes as we got as we talked about a, a little bit earlier are these very small structures they are not membrane bound organelles which is why we find them in prokaryotes but that's another story but they can either be floating around the cytoplasm or they can be stuck on this structure here called a rough ER but wherever they are whether they're stuck on this structure here called the e, the rough ER or they're floating around the cell their job is very simple they take information from the DNA inside of the nucleus and they use it to make proteins now everything you see here is proteins proteins are so crucial and the cell uses proteins to build itself and the cell uses proteins to send signals to other cells the cell pro uses proteins to to do its function proteins are everything so as you can see there's a lot of ribosomes and there's a reason for that because primarily and this may be a little too simplistic but primarily a cell is a protein making factory that's all it does and so it'll sit there and make proteins and a few other chemicals but basically make proteins and then move those proteins around and do stuff with it and that's what it's for and every organelle you see in here is designed to help that happen so ribosomes are protein makers and they're found in two separate places um, the endoplasmic reticulum is one there's two types uh, but basically the endoplasmic reticulum makes materials for the cell it makes chemicals for the cell if you have the ER the endoplasmic reticulum that is uh, covered in ribosomes then it makes proteins because remember ribosomes make proteins and this is a protein making factory right here all day long I mean like crazy it makes proteins another type of ER though is called smooth ER because there are the chemicals besides proteins that the cell needs and so that's another factory uh, that looks very similar to the rough ER but it just doesn't have the um, ribosomes on it you'll notice the proximity of this to the cell to the nucleus because the this is these are the two things that work together as closely as possible the the nucleus says make a protein and it doesn't want to have to put the information way over here it wants it right there next to it so primarily speaking the endoplasmic reticulum wraps the rough ER wraps itself around a large portion of the nucleus because they're the two things that work together the most close um, and the smooth ER isn't too far away it just doesn't have to be quite as close as the rough ER now the Golgi apparatus is an interesting structure because a lot of what the cell does is it makes chemicals and it sends them outside of the cell somewhere else and the Golgi apparatus has a job and that is to pull in these chemicals kind of wrap them up into these little structures called vesicles which is the next thing we're going to be talking about these little structures here are called vesicles the Golgi apparatus will wrap these chemicals up whether they're proteins or something else into a vesicle and then get them ready to be secreted out of the cell and it'll push this vesicle right up to the edge and the vesicle will merge with the cell wall and shove the chemical that it created out and that is again since a large portion of what the cell does is make proteins and other chemicals then the ability to package them up and push them outside of the cell is a very important job and that goes to the Golgi apparatus the Golgi apparatus is typically just one large structure although bigger cells tend to have more more than one nucleus so bigger cells also tend to have more rough and smooth ER and they're also going to need more Golgi apparatus but um, uh, in, in a basic cell construction you're gonna have one Golgi apparatus and its job is to and you'll notice there's kind of a line the information leaves the nucleus to where and then it tells these guys to make the chemicals in the cell then once the chemicals are made they come on out here to the Golgi apparatus and then they get to the cell wall so these things being in a line between the two there's that's not coincidence that's that's on purpose um, the information goes to here the chemicals are made to go to here they're packaged and then they go to here out and so that's basically what the cell does all day long now um, the vesicles again are like the small and, and these vesicles are just like really miniature little bubbles made with that lipid bilayer just like all the other membranes are 
uh, which is why it can move right up next to the cell wall or the cell membrane and just kind of merge with it because it's made out of the same stuff. But then it's like a little bubble, and then once it gets to the edge, it can take whatever's in the bubble and kind of just shove it out. That's what cells do, and your whole body is kind of based around that. Now there's another structure here called lysosomes. They're kind of similar to vacuoles, except the lysosomes have some enzymes in them that help to break things down. They can help break down food, but a lot of times it's just waste. And they can actually move up next to the cell wall too and shove things out. But they are kind of a recycling center. So before they throw, so, throw something out, they look at it and they say, hey, can we use this again? Whether it's food or other cell parts. Um, and so if it's useful, they put it back to work. And if it's not, they move up next to the cell wall and throw it out. Uh, and yes, all types of cells have lysosomes. Now we start talking about the energy part of the cell here. The mitochondria is a very important part of the cell because it is the powerhouse for the cell. Its job is to um, take uh, food, usually in the form of some type of sugar, and it takes that sugar and in a very complex process called cellular respiration, it releases then uh, molecules called ATP. And ATP is what is the energy source for the cell. We're going to talk about this an awful lot more in a couple of videos later. But right now, I need you to understand that these are like the the generators for the cell. They're there. They take energy in in the form of sugar, and they release ATP, which is what the cell uses. Now, the more energy a cell needs, like if it's a muscle cell or a uh, like a blood cell, liver cells need a lot of energy. Then they're going to have more mitochondria. If they don't need as much energy, like hair follicle. You know, like the cells that make up your skin and scalp, they'll have less mitochondria. But there's always going to be mitochondria, and those, and all cells have them, including plant cells, because they take the sugar or the food and turn it into energy for the cell. Very important, very crucial things. Um, so what's left to talk about is um, the the plant cells, and uh, the plant cells have two structures that are unique only to plants. Uh, actually, you know what? That's not true. There are lots of other photosynthetic structures. So plants and then types, certain types of protists also have these chloroplasts. But these chloroplasts are kind of, uh, they work together. I don't want to say they're the opposite of mitochondria, but they work together with mitochondria because the chloroplasts will take sunlight energy and turn it into sugar. Now remember I told you that the mitochondria will take sugar energy and turn it into ATP. Well, where does that sugar come from? Well, it comes from chloroplasts. Now, these chloroplasts, they spend their day absorbing sunlight, the energy from the sunlight. They use that like a factory. They use that energy to create a sugar molecule, which then gets released. In a lot of cases, it'll go right to the mitochondria, where the mitochondria uh, turns it into ATP. So it's that's why the two are pictured next to each other here. And that's what plants, one of the things that plants do. Now, you'll notice that there's no chloroplast in animals. Um, animal cells just could not absorb enough energy to do what animals do. Animals use a ton of energy. And so instead of trying to absorb sunlight to make enough energy for us to do, we have to eat plants or plant products or we eat things that eat plants. And that puts a lot of energy inside of us more rapidly, which we can then use for our metabolism. But plants move at a slower pace. They grow slower. They don't, they don't get up and walk around, that sort of thing. And so... Um, they absorb sunlight all day long and they use that to create sugars Now, those sugars then are used to create energy or they're used to create other structures for example the cell wall is made entirely out of sugar so the the sugar structures are also used to create things not just for energy um, and so just like with the mitochondria I want you to start in your head I, that stupid thing keeps showing up so let me get out of the way quit quit it go away I don't know how, okay. I want you in your head start equating the term mitochondria with cellular respiration. Mitochondria, cellular respiration. That's what goes together. I want you to start putting chloroplast and photosynthesis together because that's what happens. Photosynthesis occurs in the chloroplast, cellular respiration occurs in the mitochondria. And these two things are kind of they, they work together to do and, and in fact the process is, the chemical reactions in them are almost exact opposites and so we're going to spend a lot more time talking about photosynthesis and cellular respiration soon so we're not through talking about this but I want you to start getting that in your head that one happens in the chloroplast and one happens in the mitochondria okay the only other thing really that's different about plant and animal cells is that plant cells have a cell wall and that cell wall is made out of cellulose it's got a job it, it, it's an extra layer of protection and support that's why trees can grow hundreds of feet tall Okay, that's why we build our house out of trees, or out of wood, pardon me. 
because the cellulose membrane, the, the extra layer, the cell wall going around each cell, and when you add all that up to thousands and millions and billions of cells, that's a lot of cell walls in addition to the cell membrane, and it provides extra support. Um, and so the result is is a very solid structure, multicellular structure, like a plant, you know, like a tree, you know, solid. And it's solid because it's, it uses all that sugar to make these things. Now, um, it's interesting that cellulose is a polysaccharide, and I just want to kind of quickly review this idea of monomers and polymers. Uh, a glucose monomer is what's produced through photosynthesis. You take a bunch of those and you stick them together as a, in a polymerized reaction, you get a polysaccharide called cellulose, and cellulose is what the tree or the, the, the cell wall is made out of, whether it's a tree or a plant or a shrub. Um, but keep in mind, it's, it's an extra layer of protection. It also helps keep the plant from drying out, so it does a lot of work. But it's support, protection, that sort of thing makes it very strong and very rigid. And it's also one of the reasons that trees did not evolve to be able to walk around and move. We uh, Animals sacrificed this cell wall idea so that they could have movement. Uh, you couldn't move if you had every one of your, plant, of, of your cells wrapped in this extra layer. You'd be just kind of locked in solid, right? So what's the difference? Well, you know, typically just those last two things, the chloroplasts and the cell walls, although there are some people who want to tell you that a vacuole there's some people that say vacuoles are only found in plant cells and that may come up as a question on a test somewhere but I did some research on that before I started this video and there are vacuoles in animal cells so originally this slide right here said chloroplast vacuoles in cell walls but I took it out because vacuoles are found in, in, plant, in animal cells so the only two structures that we study that are different in animal and plant cells are that plant cells contain chloroplasts chloroplasts and cell walls. Okay, that's it. Um, that ends uh, video number three, and uh, that's going to wrap up our discussion of cells. Um, so please make sure that you're doing the, um, uh, the check here quizzes, and that's designed to get you ready for the EOC. Okay, thank you. We'll see you on the next set of videos.